when I look at my children, as I said in the beginning, I'm a single mother. You know, uh, here in Italy, I have five children and I'm raising them up. Uh, their father is not uh, with us because I'm a single mother, as I said. But there is a situation whereby when you look at the emotional, psychological um, health of your children, uh, I think, I personally think it is better for me to stay in a home with my children and have peace of mind than stay or want to stay in a home just to have that, uh, uh, you know, that, I don't know how to put it, just for the fact that I, I want them to grow with a father and then I, I see my children, you know, go through emotional uh, trauma. What women don't understand or what men don't understand is that we look at these children and think they don't they don't know anything they are just children but it is not true children perceive they perceive what their parents are going through most especially the mother children know when the mother is happy they know when the mother is not happy children know when the mother is sad even when you cry secretly they know they know when there's food in the house they know when there's no food in the house they know when there is when there this, that struggle going on. They know. They they feel the pain. They feel it. Maybe they, they are confused. They don't really know what exactly is going on between their father and their mother. But they know that because they, they feel the tension, they feel the, 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 the you know the stiffness of the air around them. What kind of children are you raising? What kind of future adults? Are you raising? And, 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 and it's just so powerful. Just so powerful. My God. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. In fact, you, 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 you have to, we have to get a conference for this and bring women here and men. I wish. Because. I wish. Yes. This is an epic conversation. Because, you know, one thing I also wanted to chip in is that, um, and based on what you were saying right now, I think, most of the partners, they are just being selfish, like they think of themselves more than they think of the children. Because when maybe the father or the mother say, I will not want to, uh, I will not want another person to raise my child or my children, and I also want them to have a father. Now you're thinking about yourself, that is you, I, I, I. Have you asked the child and say, hey, I've been arguing with my husband. We have been arguing with your father. The house and, you know, the energy we release is not positive. What do you think? No, just listen to the child. I tell you, and I want to say that it's not, most times, it's not just for the children to be raised by their parents. Children are like angels, and they need a conducive atmosphere to be raised in. This is why, for example, let me give an example. Here in Germany, um, the moment the government realizes that you and your husband in your home usually have abusive, uh, you know, verbal abuse, physical abuse, and all these things, when 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 the when the state realizes one, two, three times, they take the child away from you. Exactly. Now, yeah. Now taking the child away from you, they don't even care whether you are the father or the mother. All the care is to be able to raise a child in a peaceful atmosphere, just like. Cosina just said right now, because children, they need a peaceful and a loving atmosphere. It doesn't matter who raises them. You know, if they are able, because, listen, we are just caretakers. But these children have to grow to become their own reality and face their lives. So if you want to con con conducively protect them, say, no, I want my children to grow with me, to let them have a father who raises them. And then you keep destroying their mindset about marriage. You keep, you know, keeping an atmosphere of hatred, argument, you know, tension, negative energy everywhere is blocked. Then you are not raising the children. You are rather destroying the children because, like you said, the children can observe every little thing that goes in the house. And they are very sensitive. So I think it's a very, very important thing to take note. Please. Do not try to want to be the savior of your child in terms of I need 
need a father to raise my child. Exactly. I have seen children who have been raised by a single mother, and these children grow up to become great children in the future, in the society. So there's nothing about the child must be raised by a father and a mother. The thing which is there is the child must be raised in a positive, peaceful, loving, and a conducive atmosphere. So the child can focus, so that the child will not be traumatized with a lot of a negative energy, a lot of negative thoughts. See, once, what, what you allow your child to accept from their beginning will affect them in their tomorrow. So if you allow Powerful, child powerful, to, powerful. I love that. Exactly. So this time now, you are not raising the child, you are not building the child, you are destroying the child. Mm. And you are, you are breaking the child's morale because we are like gods to our children. So wow. take example from us. That's so powerful. You your husband, that is what they're going to learn and copy. And so this That's has right. a lot of negative consequences. You see young girl growing and say, I want to be a lesbian. I don't want to marry because my, my father doesn't treat my mom well. So I think I'll better stay with a woman and marry a woman instead of marrying a man. Mm. And a girl, a man will grow up and say, I want to be a homosexual because my mom was just keep abusing my father. So I prefer to get married to a man or stay without getting married because marriage is stressful. Marriage is hurting one another. It's not loving. And so the impression you give your children about marriage, that's what, or about a relationship, that's what they will grow with Exactly. Exactly. So it's very, very risky. Very mm. risky. Mm. Powerful. Thank you so much. I hope uh, people watching this program, you are taking notes. Please take note of what we are saying. This, yes. this, this, this can save a life out there. What we are sharing on this platform can save a life. So don't take it lightly. Take it seriously and That's take right. notes. Take notes. So the next thing I, I want to share why the why most women would rather remain in a toxic relationship than take the exit door is distorted thoughts. You know, based on past hurt when women are traumatized you know maybe they have had um they have had the experience of growing up in a toxic uh, environment maybe their parents uh, you know as you rightly said they grew up in a family where the mother beats or the father beats the mother or even where the mother beats the father who knows and then they grew up seeing all these things they become traumatized they become confused and in their own time when they got married even some don't even get married because they are scared okay yeah. you see even women get at the age of 40 45 they are still not married they remain single because they have been damaged emotionally while growing up and the same mother the same father that maybe thought i'm staying in this marriage because i want to protect my children why indirectly they are damaging their children emotionally psychologically and otherwise and so 
they grew up into a damaged adult. So their thoughts are distorted. Their thoughts are confused, full of doubts. And most women don't even want to, you know, leave such toxic relationship because of, you know, low self-esteem. Some blame the whole uh, experience on themselves. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I didn't, I, I, I wasn't doing it well. Maybe if I work harder, if I put more if, uh, effort on this relationship, maybe, maybe he will change. Maybe, maybe, he, maybe it's because I, I, I'm not working. Maybe tomorrow if I find work and start, you know, contributing, maybe he will change. Maybe here, maybe there. You keep waiting. You keep hoping. You keep expecting. Listen, a man that will treat you well, will treat you well despite the situation, whether he is rich, whether he is poor. Okay? For a man to raise his hand on a woman, that man must have been raised badly in his own time. Something is wrong somewhere. And both of you have to, you need to seek help. It is not, you don't have to justify violence. It might not be physical violence. It might be psychological violence. That one is even worse because you don't see it. The effect takes long to manifest. When a woman stays in a situation, in, in an environment where she is damaged psychologically, you don't see the effect immediately. It will manifest in the long run. Okay? So self blaming yourself for the for what is happening, you know, taking all the blame on you, it creates self, uh, you know, inferiority complex. It creates uh, low self esteem. It is very wrong. I think that is what I have to I have to say. It, yeah. it, it's, you know, it it, it damages your self worth. It's not good for you. It's that's, not, that's, that's, that's powerful. That's powerful. And, and also, let me add two of, of, of the points on that. It also destroys your enthusiasm. You know, mm. I have seen a lot of women with high enthusiasm. But because of this, especially psychological abuse, you, you see them becoming lukewarm. You see them becoming uh, very uh, afraid of being free and releasing themselves, you know, and, and just explode. Why? Because you are in a relationship where psychologically you are being tormented. Mm. Psychologically, you've been damaged. Mm. And so you no more see yourself with the enthusiasm you had before. And when immediately your enthusiasm is stolen or is destroyed, I tell you the truth. You need your enthusiasm to do a lot of things. Exactly. Especially women. You know, somebody like me, I have a positive energy. Like, I'm always enthusiastic. In fact. I'm always, like, I want to do something new. I want to, so... <laughs> so Very by, true. By the time, yeah, by the time my environment, like, it's like, I want to explode. It's like, you want to fly. It's like, you want to just, you know, just burst out and yeah. do great things. Yeah. Because you know I hate them. Don't just bring. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to talk about. Yeah. Like, maybe you are in, in a church where you are going through psychological abuse. 
Now, you want to talk to somebody, you want somebody to help you. This is what I'm trying to say. Then because the effects of the abuse cannot be seen physically, it's going to be difficult for the people you are you are seeking help from to, to understand. You'll be saying that he insults me every day. They will say that his thought is not from mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will say he, 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 he cheats on me, or maybe he, he steals money, our money, a financial, a finance at home, uh -huh. home keeps dropping because he's not, he's not organized, he's not inside. Okay, but that's not, so, you know, psychological abuse is the most dangerous abuse that one can ever go through because people want to see physical, uh, uh, physical effects. They want to see something that they can, they can stand on and say, yes, this is the reason why you should that relationship and so when they cannot see any physical reason then they tell you that you have to persevere and stay in that marriage and things will be fine every marriage has a challenge every marriage has a problem you cannot live and go and blah 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 and all those things they are destroying your life my exactly. brother my sister exactly if you are watching this do not go to anybody in the church to seek advice go to a professional counselor who understands these things, who has studied these things. If you are not careful, you go to somebody in your religion organization and the person will start praying for you and start speaking in tongues. <laughs> and you'll be tired from the inside because these things do not need prayers. They need counsel. They need you to talk to somebody who can empathize. Somebody who can understand your pain. Somebody who can put themselves in your shoes and be able to relate with you on what you are talking about. That's it. So, I, 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 woman of God, I just listen. I just love this topic. I, I, my husband and I, I think we are going to bring you on our broadcast on the University of Marriage. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
Mm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You are absolutely right. You know, um, I myself had, as I said, had this uh, personal experience. You know, staying in a toxic relationship can damage your self worth. It can damage. It can damage your, uh, your confidence and your performance in life. Okay, uh, you can lose confidence in yourself. You can lose self esteem. It happened to me. It happened to me. And it took me uh, hard work. I mean, hard work. I had to work on myself, you know, to be able to regain my self-worth, including this, uh, this platform that I created. It was part of the job because I had to find a platform where I have to believe in myself and, you know, put my ideas in practice and I have to do it uh, in such a way that I don't have that eyes or that finger pointing at uh, that you know judgmental finger and eyes looking at me or pointing at me I don't care who you are or what you think this is my platform no 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 you don't you don't even Taking care of yourself is out of the is out of the question. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. Self care is not there. It's not there. You are living for the man or for the woman. You are trying to fix the, the, the your partner. You can't fix another person. You can't fix their issues. You the only person you can fix is yourself. yourself. And be careful what decision you are taking as a mother or as a father your children are included in that decision because they cannot decide for themselves so now any decision you are making will affect them either negatively or positively in future so it's not an easy it's not an easy task that's why you need help you need to seek someone who is qualified to give you you know, a person a, 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 that's somebody who will look into because every situation has to be taken on a personal le level. You don't have to generalize it. I might have my own different story. Uh, Mr. B or Mrs. A might have their own different story. So you, you need to meet someone who will analyze it very well. Okay? Just, just as uh, Quincy rightly said, if you meet someone who is not qualified, Okay, that person will, will destroy will destroy you. It will dam it will, it will it will increase the damage both on you and on your children. Yeah, it will increase the damage. Some people will be giving you counsel based on their own experience, yeah. based on their mindset, yeah. about some certain issues in life. Exactly. And that's where the danger comes from. That's the danger of it. Exactly. Because Exactly. So it's very, important. very, very important. Very, very important. And another thing I think is most people, uh, they fear, uh, you know, uh, being uh, stigmatized by the society. She's a, right. she's a single mother. She's a single father. What knows what, what she did or what he did? Wow. You understand? So how people look at me, or maybe let's take, for example, I'm a leader in my local church. What will people say? How will people see me? I am supposed to be giving example. Is it by force that you have to fake it to give example? You are giving a wrong example because you are faking it already. Oh my God. You are already faking it. So who are you deceiving? Are you deceiving God? So because you want to give an example to your congregation, you are faking a perfect couple outside just to maintain the the status the profile okay you are deceiving yourself 
and you are betraying God because when God sends people in your congregation for you to lead, for you to bring up, God expects you to be faithful. And when you fake it just because you are standing in the altar, you have betrayed God's trust. You are not telling the people the truth. And God you is truth. To, you are trying to save your own reputation. Yes, no you are faking it. That's it. That's it. That's it. You are faking your identity. You pretend to be happy when you are lost, when you are miserable, when you are frustrated. And that's why I'm sorry to say this, but that I have to make I have to make make it real. Okay? I don't say amen to so many prayers I heard out there. There are some prayers I don't say amen to. And when you are speaking in tongues, if I don't have anyone interpreting, I don't know what you are talking about. Maybe it's your emotional pain you are releasing. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you, are, oh maybe you are releasing your frustration and you are speaking in tongues. <laughs> and if I don't get you, I can't say amen. I'm sorry. Because amen means I agree with you. No, I don't agree with you when God did not even agree with you because God sees you are already lying. You are faking it. God, God is not, you know, many people, they want to fake perfection. You don't have to fake perfection. It's, it's a process. You have to walk yourself through. Just like a child, you fall, you get up. Embrace your baby steps. Don't fake to be perfect when you know you are dying on the inside. You will never grow. And you will compromise your purpose for why the reason why God brought you in a time like this. The reason why God created you in a time like this. The reason why God called you. In, in whichever office you occupy in that organization. Even if you might not be in ministry, let's just say even in secular world, the kind of relationship you keep at home can affect your performance in any organization. You can be rude to people you are supposed to be kind to just because you are bitter. Yeah, you're bitter inside. Some people carry their, their problem from home, they, 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 they carry it to their workplace and they project the whole bitterness and pain and unhappiness and frustration and anger on the next person they meet. You are not, you are not, you are not doing well. It, it's not supposed to be so. So I will encourage you woman, you man, listen, I have been there too. I myself, I have been there too. So I am not just saying because I want to say. It's something that I, I experienced. I have to quit a marriage after 27 years with five children. I quit when my first daughter is almost 20 years old. She's 23 today. So for a woman, for an African woman, because... That is a, our culture and tradition for an evil woman. <laughs> I'm you. And, and, and for an evangelist, for a woman of God, <laughs> to quit her marriage after such a long period of time with five children. It's either she's crazy or something is wrong. And I don't seem like I'm crazy. Do I? I don't think so. Exactly, exactly.
exactly. the moment you are being abused, you know, psychologically, emotionally, physically, verbally, please, you need to come out. You That's need it. To especially for that. That's so it. Exactly.
Exactly. You know? So it means that our platform, we are trying to bring uh, people to understand that knowledge is very important before you enter into marriage. Exactly. The man you are going to marry, do you know the man personally? Have you been friends with the person? Have you studied the person's character? Where was the person born? What is their temperament? What are the things they like? What are the things they don't like? What is the background? All these things are details that we support. Mm, mm, exactly, like exactly, like exactly, exactly. Because you will be abused. Exactly. Because you will be abused. You will be, you will be damaged. You will be damaged. You will be damaged. You will be damaged and, and you know, people change in marriage. Exactly. If, if you have quarrel with your father and your mother and your siblings every time, then you, of course, have such moments with your spouse. Mm. And when you have no knowledge how to handle arguments, how to handle quarrels and bitterness and all these things, mm. Exactly. Thank you so much. If you are watching this platform, come on, we like you to share this broadcast, share it to people, share it. There are a lot of people who are gonna be saved just by watching this. Thank you. Exactly. So share this broadcast with so many people. Mm. People will be saving some people. Exactly. Thank you so much. That's powerful. That's powerful. You know?